Okay, so that video was from Sunday night. Uh, it's Thursday morning, and uh, yeah, Sunday night I had a little mishap with a knife. I was trying to peel off this magnet from my phone. Had my hand holding the phone case. I was just trying to wedge it. It popped off all of a sudden. Knife came through, got my thumb. As soon as it happened, I knew I was screwed. Had to go to the ER, so went to the ER Sunday night, got all patched up. It looks okay right now. Uh, luckily I work with you know a bunch of nurses and a wound care nurse so she's been changing it and cleaning it at work all week uh, as of yesterday it was definitely not healed the problem is this weekend is actually the first tournament of the year at Lake Berryessa and uh, even though I, I missed all my tendons I have full function of my thumb which is very good uh, it's still a wound it's still a wound I got to keep this thing dry and protected and you know three days on the water it's gonna be interesting so we're gonna see how that goes but um, that just wanted to explain what happened there and another thing the last upload when I talked about you know how I had to upload that video how I just didn't have content to give you guys well I just want to say thank you to all you guys who commented who support the channel support what I do as a hobby um, it means the world to me and uh, you guys are awesome. I think I have some of the best subscribers on YouTube. I read all the comments, I try to answer all the comments and you guys are awesome. So I just wanna say thank you guys so much. I appreciate the support. But today's video actually couldn't have come at a better time. I've been getting a ton of comments lately asking for a rod reel arsenal for 2019. Today's Thursday, I was supposed to go fishing but I'm gonna give this guy one more day to, you know, just relax, try to heal a little bit before the weekend. So, rod reel arsenal for 2019. Let me just say one thing to start, uh, and some of you guys will know this and get this, and some of you won't, but why, why so many rods? Why so many combinations? Well, in bass fishing, there are a ton of different baits, ton of different presentations for bass, conditions, you know, what you're fishing, water clarity, are you fishing in 40 foot, are you fishing in two foot? Are you fishing a two ounce bait? Are you fishing a, you know, a fourth of an ounce bait? There are so many baits out there, so many presentations that you need different rods to effectively fish those baits. So you need different powers, different actions. You need different speed reels. You need different lines. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but I'm going to link a video below that I think does an awesome job explaining why you need different setups for different baits and bass fishing. So, we're gonna start with the spinning rods. I've got two spinning setups, and they are the exact same rod reel combination, exact same line. So the rod is a Phoenix Maxim. It is a 7.2 medium rod, fast action. I've got a Stratic on there, Shimano Stratic a CI4. This is the 3000 series. I've got 15 pound Power Pro braid with a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is my drop shot rod. Every time I go out this year, I can almost guarantee you this rod will be in the boat. This is a staple for me. And again, last year, if I needed a bite, this is the rod, this is the combination I'd be using with a little drop shot. Like I said, I've got another one. It's the exact same combination. It's more or less a backup. I typically only bring one spinning setup when I go out on the water, but this one actually has a Senko on it. So I might bring two out uh, this year in the spring. Next rod, let's talk about probably the rod real combination bait that I'll be using the most throughout this spring and it is a chatterbait. So Z-Man custom chatterbait, black and blue Senko, black nickel blade. Little tip for you guys with your chatterbaits, put a little bobber stop right above the knot. Those little tag ends can catch up in the grass and uh, that little bobber st stop helps, uh, helps with those hangups. This is a Guru rod, it's a custom rod and it is a chatterbait rod. It's a glass rod. It's a seven foot, medium heavy, uh, moderate fast rod. I've got 15 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon on there and it is paired with a Corrado K. Loving the Corrado Ks by the way. But this rod, and I fished it a few times, is an awesome chatterbait rod. It's glass, it's the only glass rod I have, but for chatterbaits and vibrating baits, I can, 
honestly say that this glass rod, you can feel the bait a little bit better. It's odd, this kind of is almost the same as my frog rod setup. You know, it's got a lot of power, a lot of backbone, but that tip is nice and flexible. Pretty good flexible tip to really work that chatter bait. But again, still enough power to rip it through grass or even set the hook on a fish. So I'm making long casts with this chatter bait. And if you get a bite on the very end of your cast, you need some power to penetrate that fish's mouth, especially since chatterbaits tend to have a beefier hook. I think this is gonna be an awesome setup this year. Um, I love the feel of glass on the chatterbait, and I, this is not nothing new. I mean, you guys have probably heard of Brett Height. He's got the, uh, the chatterbait rod, which is glass, and he's probably the best chatterbait fisherman on the planet. So that's my chatterbait setup. This is gonna get a lot of work in this spring for sure. Next setup, it's another Guru rod. So this is, pretty much replaced my Loomis rod. My Loomis rods were getting a little dated. Guides were getting a little crusty. So I needed a new rod for a half ounce Texas rig or Rage Menace. I love throwing the Rage Menace on a half ounce tungsten weight. I went to Bam, who is the owner of Guru Rods, and I said, I need a, I need a rod that's gonna handle a half ounce weight that has a, enough power to rip fish out of cover. And this is what he came up with. So this is a 7.6 medium heavy fast action rod. I've got it paired with another Corrado K. I've got 50 pound Power Pro braid on there and this is going to be my Rage Menace rod. Our next setup is my A-Rig swim bait rod. So through the A-Rig a lot this past winter, this past fall. And it's actually a rod that I, I picked up a few years ago. It's a Halo Twilight rod. It's a 7.6 heavy rod, fast action, and I've got it paired with a Corrado. This is the Corrado 200 series. It's got 20 pound fluorocarbon on there, Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon. And this is for A-Rigs, and probably this spring, this summer, I'll transition this rod to, you know, swim baits, glide baits, the Ganterell, the S-Waver, stuff like that. Next combination is my crankbait setup, specifically square bills. I don't throw a lot of crankbaits other than square bills. Uh, right now I've got a KVD 1.5 on. Uh, great spring setup. Sorry for the background noise. But this setup is a Denali uh, lithium crankbait rod. It's a seven foot medium heavy rod. And I've got it paired with another Corrado uh, 200 series. I got 15 pound fluorocarbon on there. So this will be my crankbait setup. Next rod we have is another Denali lithium rod. It's the jerkbait series rod. So this is a medium rod. I've got it paired with a Corrado K and 12 pound fluorocarbon. This again is for jerkbaits. Uh, it's a shorter rod. It's a little bit more limber. So you can really get a lot of action out of your jerkbaits. And uh, you guys know I like those mega bass. I wanted to invest in a good combination for the mega bass trick baits so trick bait setup the other denali and the last denali lithium rod i have is probably my favorite combination in the world because it's my favorite bait to throw in the world and it's my frog setup this is a denali lithium frog rod it's a heavy rod i've got another corrado k on there it's a eight to one gear ratio reel so high speed reel i've got 50 pound power pro braid on there i've talked about why I like this as a frog rod, the shorter length, the shorter handle, more pinpoint casts from a kayak especially. Uh, it's a heavy rod, but it's got a flexible tip, almost like the chatterbait rod. So you can still work this frog, you can still walk this frog, work it over cover, but that tip, that tip shuts down quick. And when you load up on that fish, I mean, you're able to horse it in. So this will definitely be a staple this year, especially on the Delta for me. And the last combination I have is actually a Uribe Riverside M3. Uh, pick this up as a rod for lipless crankbaits. I wanna try to fish lipless crankbaits a little bit more this year. I've got an LV500 in this little uh, bait sack. But I've got it paired with a Corrado 200 series. I've got 15 pound fluorocarbon. This rod's only 100 bucks. So I picked it up, 100 bucks. What was intriguing about this rod, and I don't know if you can see this, but take a look at the guides. So they're actually twisted. It's a twisted wrapped rod. For the most part, the twisted wrapping allows more sensitivity. That's the big advantage, but could just be me, but it seems like I can get a little bit further casts with those guides like that. I've thrown it a few times so far, ripping uh, the lipless crankbait out of grass, so it rips it out of grass real good. Yeah, hopefully we can catch a few on this combination this spring. Now I definitely have more rods than I do reels, but I do have three different rods here that will pretty much be swapped out with reels throughout the year. I've got a Dobbins Champion Extreme rod. Um, this will not only be for big, you know, one ounce, one and a half ounce baits, but this is also my spoon rod. I haven't had to use a spoon in a while, but uh, this has actually worked really well for me when spooning those deep fish in the winter. Kind of a multi-purpose rod that's not always with me, but uh, 
I definitely need it certain times a year. And same thing for this rod. This is an I rod. This is their flipping and pitching rod. 7-7 seven, seven rod. This is the longest rod I own. And this will strictly be for when I want to fish one ounce to one and a half ounce baits punching in the delta so again a very specific rod it's time and place but definitely needed for some of the fishing that i do and the last rod i have for you guys is a rod i've had for three years now it's a mojo bass rod this is a seven foot medium power rod fast action and it is my bed fishing rod so i'll swap out a reel put on you know corrado with 15 pound fluorocarbon so when i'm fishing the spawn and i'm fishing sight fishing this is the rod that i use i like the medium because i tend to set the hook hard and that can be a little bit more forgiving for me especially when you're fishing close quarters i like the shorter length you can make more precise casts make more casts and uh yeah this one will be a fun one to use this spring for sure anyways that is my entire rod reel collection for 2019 um i will link all of these rods, reels, some of the baits I use in the description uh, as best I can. That's what I have. That's what I'm going to use for the majority of the year. Things, again, will swap out depending on the conditions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, thank you for all the comments, all the support. Next video should be on the water, so we're going to see how this guy holds up. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one.